There's something that really annoys me about the Florida Panthers, and it's the fact that their team name is a lie. Well, yes, the Florida Panther is the official state animal of Florida. The problem is that it's actually not a panther. In fact, it's one of the two big cats that aren't in the genus Panthera, the other one being cheetahs. The Florida Panther actually falls under the genus Puma, and to be more specific, this is their distinct subspecies name. So Florida Panthers aren't actually Panthers, which means the team should change their name to the Florida Pumas. Have you ever wanted to meet Spongebob? Well, now you can. Kinda. Meet Spongiforma squarepantsy, a fungus which grows in Malaysia on the island of Borneo. And you might be wondering why a land fungus is named after a fictional sea sponge, and the answer is simple, it looks like a sponge. In fact, the people who named it said that they were just having fun, and initial reviewers criticized the name for not being correct Latin. These reviewers also tried to change the name to Spongiforma quadrato pantaloni, which if you know Latin, is just a translation of square pantsy. This is Chris Hadfield, and this is his bee. No, he's not a beekeeper, to my knowledge. He's a retired astronaut, fighter pilot, engineer, musician, and author. If you didn't know that, I'd guess you aren't Canadian. But because of that, what did the zoological community do for all of his accomplishments? They named this bee species, Andrena had fieldy in honor of him. Have you ever wondered why koalas are sometimes called koala bears, even though they're clearly not bears? Well, it's because English-speaking settlers thought they looked like and behaved like mini bears. This is reflected in their scientific name, Phascolarctos cenarius, where Phascolarctos means pouched bear and cenarius means ash-colored. So despite the fact that you could call them ash-colored pouched bears, they're actually more closely related to kangaroos and wombats, meaning they're marsupials. Staying with this week's theme of bears, the scientific name for the brown bear is Ursus arctos. You might think this means arctic bear, but the word arctos actually comes from the Greek word for bear, meaning the brown bear is literally called the bear bear. Going one step further, this is the grizzly subspecies name, which translates to horrible bear bear. So if you're ever being chased by a grizzly, just remember how weird his Latin name actually is. This is the world's largest turd. Wait, let me explain. This is the Tibetan blackbird, also known as Turdus maximus. The word maximus obviously means largest, while not so obviously the word turdus means thrush. So I suppose I did kind of lie, but the Tibetan blackbird isn't even the largest thrush in the world, so I think the nickname of world's biggest turd is very appropriate. The American bison is the largest land mammal in North America, and scientifically, they're known as the bison bison. They've been split up into two subspecies. The wood bison is known as bison bison athabasca because they're present in the Athabasca region of western Canada. The plains bison, on the other hand, is known as bison bison bison, so if you weren't sure if the plains bison was really a bison, now you know. Sir David Attenborough, one of the most recognizable narrators of all time, so naturally, the first thing you think about when you hear his name is urinals. I kid, of course, but that's what some biologists thought. Kinda. This is Nepenthes attenboroughi, a critically endangered carnivorous pitcher plant of Southeast Asia. So no, it's not a urinal, it's an incredibly interesting plant which got named after an incredibly successful man. The red panda is quite an interesting animal. Many people think it's not a real panda because it doesn't look like the other one, but the word panda likely came from the Nepali word ponya, which means bamboo eater. So the red panda is just a red bamboo eater, while the giant panda is just a giant bamboo eater. Anyways, their scientific name is Ilurus fulgens. Ilurus is derived from the Greek word for cat, while fulgens means fire-colored or shining. So yeah, if you feel like it, a name that you could actually call them are the shining fire cats. This is the Dracula Smaug Orchid. Starting with the genus name, Dracula is obviously the name of a famous vampire. The name Dracula is said to be used for the genus because some of the species are blood red colored, but others claim that since Dracula actually means little dragon, and some of the species have a dragon-like appearance, that's why the name is used. But anyways, when noticing that Smaug is the name of the dragon in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, and has Germanic origins meaning to squeeze through a hole, you could end up calling the plant the little dragon that squeezed through a hole. I don't know why you'd want to, but you could. The jackass penguin is the only penguin species that lives on the African continent, which makes its common name of the African penguin make sense. Another name for them is Sphiniscus demersus. The first word comes from this ancient Greek word, which means wedge, which either refers to their flipper shape or the way the penguins look while swimming, while demersus is the Latin word for plunging. So one final name for these flightless birds are the plunging wedges.
This is the African wild dog, one of the most endangered species in the world. There's estimated to only be around 6,600 individuals left in the wild. But we're not here to talk about that today. That might be a story for another time. What we're here to talk about is their scientific name, Lycoan pictus, which translates to painted or ornate wolf. As you can probably see, this name reflects their appearance as they almost look like they've been painted on by a quite untalented painter. Their scientific name is also quite similar to one of their nicknames, as they are sometimes known as African painted dogs. Dogs. These are puffins. These are also puffins. And yes, these are also puffins. Unsurprisingly, the three species of puffin all share the same genus name, and the genus name is Fratercula. The name means little brother or little friar, and they're named this because their plumage sort of looks like the robes of a monk, but as far as I know, they're not religious in any way. If there's one thing I know, it's that pigs aren't terrible. Except for these ones. Meet the Deodon, a buffalo-sized pig that's also known as Deodon Shoshinensis. Jeez, that was a mouthful. But anyways, the word Deodon comes from the Greek word Deos, which means dreadful or hostile, and the word Odon, which means teeth. You may also see the name Dinohus Hollandi. There is a dispute to whether or not these were the same animals, but either way, the name Dinahus means terrible pig and Hollandi is named after William Jacob Holland, who is the director of the Carnegie Museums in Pittsburgh. Well, you might be asking, why were they called these names? Well, look at them. They look terrible and have dreadful teeth. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is a pretty cool looking frog, and to my surprise, I found out it's also a king. No, I don't mean it's the king of the rainforest, but the current king of the United Kingdom. What do I mean by that? Well, its common name is the Prince Charles Stream Tree Frog, named after the Prince of Wales at the time of discovery, Prince Charles. The king's name is also present in its scientific name, as it's Hyloscurtus Prince Charlesy. But you may be asking yourself, why would they name it after him? Well, I'll tell you. It's because of King Charles' efforts to provide aid to the rainforest through the Prince's Rainforest Project. Funny enough, he used a frog as part of the logo for this initiative, so it's only fitting that a tropical frog was named after him. Australia is a very weird place. From drop bears to gigantic spiders, everything there seems like it wants to kill you. One of those animals that can sometimes be dangerous is the common wombat, aka Vombatis ursinus. The word Vombatis is derived from the Australian Aboriginal word wombat, which was the word they used for the animal, and ursinus means bear-like as it's derived from the Latin word for bear. So that would mean they could be called wombat bears, and at some point they were actually called native bears by Australian farmers or native badgers by settlers. So there you have it, Australia, along with the koala, has two fake bears. Ah, the wonderpus, nature's best creation. It's just so photogenic. Ah, just wait, let me explain real quick. This is the wonderpus, also known as wonderpus photogenicus. The word Wonderpus comes from an amalgamation of the German word Wunder, which means marvel or wonder, surprise surprise, and the English word octopus. The word photogenicus is used because the octopus is known to be extremely photogenic. So, if you're wondering if there's an octopus that's more photogenic than you, the answer is yes, and it's a Wonderpus. The Arctic is one cold place, but like most places, it still houses a variety of species. One of which is this massive animal, the polar bear, whose scientific name doesn't mean arctic bear, white bear, or snow bear, but actually sea bear. Its scientific name is Ursus maritimus, likely due to the polar bear's ability to hunt by swimming in the sea or by using the sea ice. This name is also very similar to an Inuit name for the animal, which translates to those that go down to the sea. 